is starting to seize cars permanently for car shows, then you might be wondering to yourself, are car shows dead? And to that end, I would say, no, they're not. Uh, I would say that like organized events, planned events are, are pretty much safe so long as everybody who's there, you know, follows the rules. And the reason why I would say like some of these more organized shows have rules is because the event host went through a lot of trouble to get permission from the city, the you know, the owner, say it's a, it's a parking lot. It's, um, it's a building like a warehouse, whatever it is. They went through a lot of trouble to get permission to set private time aside in order to reserve the area. And they said, you know, what are the do's and don'ts? And then, you know, whoever they're speaking to will say, you know, it's okay for you to have the event. You know, if you want to have food, music, that's fine. But you know, these few things right here are an absolute no. And then if those rules are broken, then that's where you could see law enforcement come in and then potentially there would be some legal action uh, that would be taken against, you know, the offenders. So I'm making today's topic. Uh, it's actually in dedication to my friend's uh, video or sorry, not video, but his event this last weekend in uh it was in i want to say pleasanton right now but i know it wasn't it was in um oh my goodness um it's right next to pleasanton it's um danville danville so if you if you guys are from the bay area and you don't know where danville is it's actually uh near pleasanton san ramon area um very close to, I would say like Crow Canyon area. Um, usually people know that, know that area because it's like a big area where you can get through to the like Hayward and Fremont. Um, so, uh, I think these are, this is a picture of the event. And so there were a ton of cars there. And, uh, my friend is actually the one who hosted it, uh, you know, uh, obsessed studios, uh, his name is David, and he hosted this amazing event. A lot of people come together, and I think this is a great place for like-minded people to come together to get to know each other. If you're a content creator, meet other content creators, uh, network, and maybe you know it could be the start of a potential partnership, or maybe you guys could feature each other, something like that, where you know you could work together. Uh, and I would say that this event was like 99% successful. I would say if it was all up to uh, Team Obsessed and my friend David and, and his entire team and everybody else who had helped out, I would say it's 100% success. However, you do have a couple of people there that will do irresponsible things. Now, this isn't a picture from the actual event. Um, uh, but I would say that things like this should be prevented if there's not like a dedicated section for this type of thing, like burnouts, revving, that type of stuff, which this venue strictly said to not do. Otherwise, you can't host your event here next time. And I don't think people really understand how much time, effort, money and all the other resources go into making an event of this level of this magnitude come together and go by smoothly and then you decide to just kind of go around the corner but it's still you're still very much associated with the venue and in, in the eyes of law enforcement and then you do a couple of burnouts and revs and things like that because there's a couple of you know, people there with their cell phones out and you want to impress them, which I can understand. However, not the smartest thing because when, when I got there, I saw that there was actually a cop. Like as soon as you turn out, there's a cop on, on either end. So no matter where you go, there's a cop that would watch you do your pull or do your rev. And all these people that you're trying to impress, keep in mind, 
they're not going to pay your bills. You don't know them. They didn't pay for the mods that you put on your car. So it goes to the old adage of you're buying, not necessarily you're buying things with money you don't have, but you're buying them to impress people you don't necessarily know, maybe you don't even really like. And then you're going to have the expense of like a ticket or a fine, whatever it is. And those people, they're not going to pay it. So, and then on top of that is you, you kind of ruin the reputation for the host and they have to go through a whole bunch of, you know, hoops and explanations as far as to how this won't happen again and potentially you could get banned. Um, but some shows, you know, they do have a, a, a time and a place for it. Like, I think this is out in Vegas during, during SEMA, like it's guarded off, people are protected and it's safe. No problem. You know, you have dedicated racetracks that will allow this type of thing. Um, you know, for this type of event, you guys can see over here, like it's mostly the cars are, you know, at still and, you know, you can pop the engine, you can, you know, open the trunk. If you have a sound system in there, you know, you can show off your car and then get to know people. It's really more of a meet and greet type of thing versus like, Hey, I'm going to rev the car really loud type of thing. And so I would say be mindful of the type of event, right? Not every car event is meant to be, I'm going to rev the car really loud and do a burnout. Like not every event is meant to be like that, right? You can think of like SEMA when you're inside like the warehouse area, like some of the cars are not really doing that. It's just a gallery, a museum, if you will, where you come in and it's meant to be, you know, viewed at that standpoint. And when you do, you can, you know, you can get some good insight from people on, on like how they did their build like this, for example. And you can ask them, you know, how did you do this and this? You know, I already, I, my car is starting out like this and I want it to be like this. It seems like you've already done those things would you lend some insight? And that's what this type of event is really good for. If you're somebody who's a content creator and maybe uh, you're just starting out and you don't have access to a lot of nice cars, this is a good event for not only taking the chance to produce that content or make that content, but get into contact with other people, showcase your work and say, hey, you know, I'm willing to, you know, showcase your car on my platform and I would like to do this for you, would it be okay in the future if we teamed up? Uh, and when you look at it from that lens, this is what these type of events <clears throat> will do for you and can better you. So just be mindful when you're coming to an event like this. Usually there's a flyer like on Instagram, you know, some people put uh, like short videos on YouTube about the event, the do's, the do nots, and everybody can have a good time, all right? Don't make it all about, you know, your yourself. Um, you know, be respectful because also too is you never know on the back end if, if there's an offender of the rules, they get a ticket and then potentially the host could get in trouble as well. And then if you're the host and you're saying, well, you know, I didn't, I didn't break any rules. You know, all of my team was, was okay. And I have to pay a fee for this event that I'm taking time out of, you know, I'm using my time, my resources to do and I have to pay. Why does that make any sense? Right? So it, it, it's hurting the community as a whole, right? So, uh, this is one of the events. This is one of the main events that, um, my buddy does. And then the other one is, is week fest. So week fest in San Jose, where this is really like there's there's no revving in this building. It's really like a, a a show event where you can see all the cars or different builds. And here it's more formal. If you go to Week Fest, it's some places they have like a sheet of paper or some people even have a tablet that sh that says like the car, the build, everything that's in there. Uh, that way you can go you know through everything in an itemized list and see exactly what the car has. And this is where you know, like the, the other event, I would say it's a little less formal. Some people can just show up and go, but these cars, they're registered. 
uh they're they're there a day in advance they're clean they're prepped like this is probably like everybody wants to make sure that their car is a hundred percent for this type of event and then you know they're they're ranked and they get trophies and all that the other one is more like a fun meet and greet type of event and i would say that this is really important because i would say when we do things correctly when we're not causing trouble for the surrounding area we're not giving the cops a headache um we're not drawing any unnecessary attention that would warrant a complaint then i would say then that's when the car community really thrives that's when everybody really can benefit but i would say that a lot of the things that i see that is becoming popular as far as posts on like instagram youtube um is uh like takeovers or you know sideshows and it's gotten so bad to the point where you know they'll stop traffic on the bridge they'll stop traffic in the middle of an intersection during uh during rush hour and that is definitely not the time and place like people are trying to get home to their families after a long day of work and then to have somebody come in who's you know probably not even really working their real job yet you know causing all of this unnecessary attention delaying that person for several hours probably to get home to their family just because they want to show off not only that is some of the spectators they get hurt and in response of that there's actually a city here or a county i believe in california that is taking very strict precautions against these type of events and so you can see here it says a suburb of los angeles will combat sideshows or street takeovers with some of the most stringent laws in the united states okay so here it is uh pico rivera uh that's the city city council on tuesday initially passed a local ordinance allowing police to permanently confiscate vehicles used in illegal shows or street racing spectators within 500 feet of the sideshow can be fined up to two thousand dollars for watching the event or even preparing for one the new ordinance may become permanent in 30 days so i hope that you guys can see that as an event host and somebody who's a car enthusiast imagine if this type of rule was in place at an event like this where you have lots of cars lots of people and the person decides to just go around the block which is still within 500 feet because 500 feet according to that article is about two city blocks that means every car in here could get pinched because technically they are preparing now i do feel that that term preparing or viewing within 500 feet is a very loose term i think that they should be a little bit more specific in what that actually means because if you're not i would say if you're not in the immediate vicinity you know i would say two block you know 500 feet is a lot um so i would say like for an event like this if you're not in the immediate vicinity of the event like if you decided to to take it to the main road and do something irresponsible over there the people in the event shouldn't be affected but if that law was in place could you imagine all these people get fined up to two thousand dollars and the event host also so it's it's a pretty big thing um as cities get more and more strict with this type of thing and and i would say unfortunately the cities the type of cities that would allow you to host an event like this that have a nice venue nice streets a place where you can park your car and not worry about it getting robbed or somebody taking your wheels and leaving you on cinder blocks a place where you can have all of these cars and zero like theft zero um i guess vandalism anything like that those type of cities that can host an event and people can come together and feel safe are the type of cities that would also pass this kind of law because they don't want any unlawlessness in their city all right so let's let's keep on going this is a short article this proposed ordinance and enforcement options will provide the city with additional tools to address the issue of illegal street takeovers uh dealers such 
oh, deter such activities and ensure that the roadways in Pico Rivera remain safe for everyone. Councilman John Garcia said in a statement, by taking action, we are sending a strong message that illegal street takeovers will not be tolerated in Pico Rivera and that the safety and well-being of its residents and visitors are paramount to the city council, which is true, right? If somebody is doing burnouts or, or donuts or, or whatever, and there's not guardrails in place and you have, you know, everybody's trying to be a content creator, they're trying to get right up on the car. Not saying that the driver has malicious intent, but if you're the driver, you're worried about your car. And if somebody is trying to get in at a low angle and sneak up on your car to get a close up, how would the driver ever know? And then that person gets hit, injured, you know, or something worse, then that is cause for concern. Uh, California has enacted increasingly tougher penalties for sideshows, including a state law passed last year that would charge a driver with vehicular manslaughter. Here we go. If a spectator was killed during a sideshow or illegal street race, California then added parking lots and other off street locations as prohibited areas for the spectacles. Also passed last year, California could suspend driver's license of anyone participating in a sideshow or street race above any penalties for reckless driving. Again, when we look at this venue, this is a huge parking lot, right? And then when you drive out, like this is the main drive out, you have the street right there. So this definitely falls within the parameters of, of what that law is talking about. Um, and, and if you can see here, like there, if that last picture is that, oh, that went by pretty quick is that there, there's residential area around there, right? So you have to be mindful of the area that, that you're in. And so to end it, it says the Pico Rivera ordinance is especially tough because it empowers police to effectively confiscate a car forever. If it's part of a sideshow. What's more, the owner doesn't need to be the driver. Police can confiscate the car if the driver is a family member or the owner or lives in the same address. Pico Rivera's ordinance has already attracted attention from other nearby California municipalities. And so basically it's saying to cut it out. I would say it's, you know, events like this, they're meant to be fun Everybody can enjoy everyone's time. It's organized. You know, the cars come in, you know, people who are not associated with the event can still go to that place to eat, to watch a movie, whatever services are offered in this area and not be obstructed. Right. And so this is definitely not a sideshow or a takeover. This is an organized event that is meant to, you know, enhance the car community, not take away from it. And so I'm actually kind of curious uh, on your guys' take. I know that things like this are are increasingly popular or doing things like this, um, like after an event is increasingly popular. But, uh, and here we go again. This is actually an event that uh, um, the shop that I'm, I'm partnered with, I mean, think about it. They had an event. It, it was, it's a toy drive, right? Toy drive for, uh, for, for young kids, uh, with who are a little disadvantaged. So they have a toy drive, right? It's, it's meant for people to check out the cars, you know, drop off some toys for the kids for the holidays. And then you turn around. I, I actually turned off the sound because of, uh, you know, there, there's a quite a bit of language. I don't think YouTube would like. Boom. You rev out after this. This is a toy drive for kids, right? So you can imagine that kids are here too. You decided to do that because there's all these people here with phones and they wanted to look cool and there's your car. Do you think anybody with the phone is going to pay for this person's wheels, suspension, body work? No, but they're really famous now. And then the funny thing is that they're really famous now, but they deleted their Instagram account because they were getting shamed so much. It's the wrong type of attention, not all attention is good attention, right? And so if you wanted a little bit more insight to that is, you know, all the airbags went, right? So it, it wasn't a fun day for them. 
Um, but I am curious. I mean, I don't know what necessarily what the draw is and maybe it's different. Like my friend David and I were a little bit different because, you know, he, he, he uses it kind of like as a bit business platform. Like he wants to spread a good car culture, right? So it's important for him to maintain a good image in the marketplace. For me, I make videos on YouTube. If, if my car gets confiscated, then there goes that, right? But as somebody who's not really looking to do anything as far as content creation for their own cars, or they're not using it as a, as a big business model as my friend David is, I'm curious if you are like, what is the allure or attractiveness of these events? Because as I said before, is you're doing all of these things to show off, but none of these events are sponsored, right? Nobody's paying for your wheels, tire, suspension, gas, all of the things. And then if you get a ticket, nobody but you is paying for it. You're taking like the maximum risk for very minimum reward. So I am all for fun events like this. You get to see extremely rare cars, extremely well-built cars, cars that people aspire to build their car like, and you can get ideas and innovation and, and partner up with other people that, have, that are at a place where you would like to be. So I'm curious is when you could have that, but then an event like this or actions like this take away from that, do you also get upset? And so with that, we'll open it up for Q&A. And we already got a couple of chats here loaded up. Uh, car snob, how are you doing? I, haven't, I don't think I've seen you in a while. I hope you're doing well. Not a real... Not around Orlando. Okay. Uh, so I'm guessing if that's to the title of the, uh, to the video, then I'm hope that I guess the Orlando car scene is doing well. And I hope the community is doing well. Mr. Cheeks. Sorry, I sent a message on Instagram, but you didn't respond. Okay. I'll take a look at it. I have a question regarding to our Bimmer. Okay, sure. I'll take a look. Soul Singer, what's up, man? Speaking of car shows, I'll be at Dirtfish on July 8th for its show. Although the car my girlfriend and I were going to show was destroyed by a drunk at 2 a.m. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, see, so somebody else being responsible and completely out of their control. I hope that you guys weren't in the car at all, uh, safe and sound and inside. But uh, this is another thing that I'm talking about is somebody decided to do something very irresponsible and, and affected somebody who had nothing to do or had any control of the situation, right? Again, being selfish. So and I, I know Soul Singer puts in a lot of work into this stuff. So he spent two years building the car and it got destroyed in an instant. Yep. Organized shows for the win. The Tacoma takeovers have just pissed people off and caused unnecessary laws. Right? I agree. Um, I think there was somebody who was saying, I think, I don't, I think it was a podcast or something. I, I It was just a clip that I caught. But they're saying that California probably isn't necessarily going to like seize and hold the cars. Like once a car has been seized and it probably hasn't been claimed for a certain amount of time, they're just going to crush the car. They're not going to sell it. They're not going to auction it off. It's just crushed. And uh, I guess California has a history of doing this with confiscated cars. I mean, you know, they can sell them to other states. I don't know why they would just crush them. It seems like it's, it's a big loss. If the state can recoup some money, I mean, California could use the money uh but i just don't understand why so imagine that is you do all of that again you take all the risk all of that type of stuff engage in all the behavior and then your car gets crushed 
So not only do you have to pay the fee, pay the fine, lose your driver's license, and then you lose your car. And, and there's no chance of you like, oh, I'm gonna buy it back. You're gonna buy back, you know, a soda can essentially, like a crushed soda can. So um, I think like good events are fine. And, and, and I think this is one of the reasons why like I, I probably have never been to a car event, a car show, uh, unless it's my buddies. I, if I'm not mistaken, his, his week fest event last year was the first car show that I've ever been to. Um, usually I don't actually go to like events like concerts or anything. I'm usually, I usually have something else. I'm usually working on, on something or, um, something always comes up, but I'm usually, I usually never go to events. Um, and a lot of it has to deal with not the event itself, but the aftermath of the event. And I just never want to get kind of tied up in that type of situation. But I would say that my friend, if you wanted to check out a show with nice cars, people who are willing to engage with you, give some insight, um, people who are hungry to learn, people who are willing to partner up on projects, all of those type of things. This is the type of event that you want to go to. You don't want to go to a takeover or whatnot because everybody wants to do their thing and leave. People want to be famous for the wrong type of reasons, right? Um, like I said, I mean, you don't see these type of cars doing those type of things. Uh, that's what I'll, I will say. Uh, to, to put it as politely as I can, um, you won't see these cars so well built, so well kept, um, attention to detail at every step doing something as irresponsible or reckless or risky as that, because they've put a lot of time and effort into these cars for it to go away in an instant and, an, and in an instant that they could have controlled. Uh, let's see here. Soul Slinger. The car was parked. Somebody thinking they were cool, did some dumb stuff and smashed it. Yep. That's pretty much what I was thinking. Uh, I'm glad that you weren't and your girlfriend wasn't in the car and that you guys are safe. Uh, I had a friend uh, a while back and um, it was, it's pretty sad is a uh, drunk driver, but the drunk driver was in her car and, uh, Normally, my friend is the designated driver. She doesn't, she doesn't drink. However, um, one bit of oversight was that the guy had a manual and she can't drive manual. So um, it was a car full of, of people and um, some of them have, have passed and she had a pretty severe, um, you know, injuries. And as always, the driver is, was, was almost left without a scratch, but definitely, you know, they went to court and, you know, he, he's serving his time now. Um, so drunk driving is, I mean, with things like Uber, Lyft, and all of those other services, I don't understand how somebody can get like a DUI at this point in the game. It, one of the things that really bewilders me now, uh, talking about this is I don't understand how like professional athletes and celebrities, people who make millions, sometimes billions of dollars, money that some of us will never even get close to in our lifetime. How do these people get DUIs? Like, don't they have an agent, a PR rep, or, or like a fund that's dedicated to like Uber or Lyft? I know like sports teams, they have a dedicated fund for like Uber and Lyft, that if these guys get drunk, they just go on the app, they use the company's dime and they'll pick them up. Um, you know, the X Raiders wide receiver. I don't understand. I have no idea. Like, like you have your whole career ahead of you. Just use the account. I don't understand why people of that stature run into a situation like that. Uh, it makes no sense. It's like, you, like you're not protecting your investment. You're not protecting your biggest asset, which in their case is themselves, right? Their, their celebrity status, right? 
So, you know, that guy's not catching any footballs anytime soon. Car snob. Okay. Car snob, soul, uh, soul singer, car snob sent some uh, well wishes your way. And uh, you're saying that you got to build something crazier. You got to show us what you're building every once in a while, man. You know? Um, so I hope, I hope your, your build is going well and it's good to see you back here. I hope you're doing well. It's been a while. Uh, but yeah, like stuff like this is like, you would never see this on the street for the most part, unless you like live next to these people, you know, these cars only come out like a few times in a year just for this type of event. Uh, and it's amazing. It's really amazing of what people do. So I would say all the crazy stuff you hear on forums, like people will say, oh, um, you know, I'm going to drop this engine in. I'm going to swap this. I'm going to get these wheels fitted. I'm going to do a wide body kit. You know, it's going to have all these parts in here. It's all going to fit. I don't have to, you know, uh, do two crazy modifications. And you're like, that's, that's not real, right? Like, you, you know, that's not realistic. Um, that would never happen. Uh, that's one in a million. You're you're like the one crazy person that would ever do that. Those cars and those people are at these events, right? So all the people that are doing all the crazy stuff to their car to dial in the best fitment to get in, you know, a better engine, better suspension, aero, you know, first to do a wide body kit or, you know, they, they did the R&D for the wide body kit. The cars are here at these shows. And to me, you know, these events put shows like this at risk because there comes a certain point in time where these venues and the cities will say, is it really worth the risk that we're taking? Right? Uh, the event hosts, like my friend, you know, this is his website, Obsessed US. Um, you know, feel free to check out the gallery. Like, they have more pictures than than this, right? Uh, and so, like, they do a lot of stuff, right? Imagine if it got to a point where people were, were so reckless that we couldn't have events like this, Right? if it wasn't worth his time and effort anymore. And to me, that would be very sad because I think, you know, he's very talented at what he's done. He's done, he's worked extremely hard to create this type of community and to be able to bring people together, a lot of people together in an organized fashion takes a lot of work and effort. And I, and I tip my hat to him and his team uh, because of how amazing the show is and the type of cars that come, right? Ima Im imagine if you put up a post on Instagram or Facebook or or TikTok, whatever it is, and you said, oh, car meet. Could you get cars like this? You say, oh, uh, let, let's do a car meet in a week, in a month. We'll plan it out in advance. Could you get cars like this? Could you get cars to show up to your event that are like this? Or it's organized. And I, I mean, I think next time I... I uh, some, someone suggested food trucks, but I think this, this, this area where he had it was nice. Um, there weren't necessarily food trucks, but the plaza that it was in, uh, there were eateries all around. So, so like if you were hungry, you wanted a drink, like it, you could get it. It's very accessible, but I get it. Some people want it, you know, right there. Like they don't necessarily want to leave the area. Maybe they want to like, if they meet somebody that they, that they, like or or they're trying to get information from maybe they're like oh you want to go grab a drink and it's right there it's very convenient they can continue building that relationship um uh, and so you know that might not be a bad idea however the people with the really nice cars they'll be like oh, i don't know if i want food food like right there um but it was a it was a good suggestion in a, in of its own right um let's see here soul slinger the 540i is done for now. I'm com you're commuting with it now. Nice. That's been a few months. Congratulations. I hope I hope I'm interpreting that correctly. If I am, uh, I'm super happy for you. I got to check in on uh, the Discord. I haven't been on Discord in a while. Sometimes I just 
like the app sends me notifications, I click it and then it brings me to the app. Um, I'm really bad at checking my discord. Uh, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I'm sad about the other car, but I'm very happy about this one. Nice. Right on. Awesome. Yeah. So if you guys are in the Bay area, um, you know, check out the next event. I think, uh, let's see on the website. I think he has, let's see about, let's see if they know when the next event is film. Oh yeah. They, so my buddy, he also films the car. So all of the, all of these videos that you're, that you see, you guys can also check them out on, um, on, uh, YouTube at obsessed studios all of the the cars that are on there he filmed himself so he pretty much all of the video work that i've i've learned over the last few years he's like 100 percent responsible for that so he's an amazing videographer as well um the gallery services Oop. Hmm. Let's see. Maybe it's under shop, like you could buy tickets or something. No. Okay, maybe this is just his merch. Let's see here. Okay, well, I know that he's doing Week Fest. Week Fest in San Jose, he, I know that he's doing. Uh, I don't know if he's doing the one in LA, but you guys could always um, find him on Instagram. Let's see. So you guys could always check him out over here. Um, all of this stuff that, you know, he, he does himself. I think some of this stuff, um, like, like this stuff, I, I think maybe some people contribute from the event. And so maybe not all of these type of pictures are from him, but I would say the vast majority of the stuff, I would say like 90% of it is, is, is him. Oh, and we, we have a word in, we have, we have official. Let me pull it up on the other screen here. So this is from the man himself. Uh, hi Fritz. The next event would be in week fest, San Jose, July 2nd. You and your audience should come visit. All right. Well, I'll definitely be there. Uh, it was definitely fun last time. If you guys, I would say if you guys, uh, uh, go to the event and have your hosted, like they have in a, a competition of like, you know, best build, most custom this, best Beamer, you know, different categories and, and whatnot. Uh, I believe last year they, they won overall. I think like, as far as the collection of cars they had, I think they won first overall. I don't know if they what won the best BMW. I believe they did. Um, and so I would say if you're hosting with an, with another vendor there, you definitely have your work cut out for you because uh, David is not bringing any slouches uh, under his banner. So uh, it, it's really fun. It's, it's a fun event. You get to meet a lot of people. You get to check out a lot of nice cars, a lot of different builds. It's not just cars as well. If you guys are into trucks, there was a few trucks there as well. Uh, it's pretty crazy. It was, it, and like, it's fun. And I think I don't know. I think maybe I was inside. Maybe some people were doing stuff outside that I couldn't see, but it's very well contained, very well organized. Get there early because the line is long. Let's see. Soul Slinger. I don't know if I'm allowed to make videos because of what I do for work. I have to talk to security and see if I can. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Don't do anything if it gets you in trouble. Um, you could always just tell them like, I mean, there's nothing wrong if I don't, I don't know if there's anything wrong, but if you take video for yourself personally, like a, something for you personally to remember, um, hopefully that would be okay. Like if there's something interesting that you see and you just want to take like a, a snippet for you to kind of, you know, recall later on, hopefully that would be okay. 
uh, and then you can just share it with me secretly on the on the on the Discord. <laughs> uh, we had a briefing that touched on it, so I need to ask. Okay, yeah, I don't want you to get in trouble, uh, but I do hope that you can actually do some videos for yourself personally at the very least. Uh, you know, if, if you want to want to share it with me, I'd be very happy to. But if you can't, I understand as well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is the next event that uh, David has up at Weekfest in San Jose. Um, I hope all of you guys can make it. Again, let me know your thoughts on these type of events. Uh, I want everybody to be safe, be responsible, not lose money unnecessary, not add unnecessary cost to your life, reduce the stress, you know, make your life better. That's all that I hope to do here with not just the videos, but the live streams. And I mean, David is, is doing an amazing job in the community of bringing all these different people together. And so if we can do that, I think that we would make a better impact and give a better image of the car community versus the type of things that we were talking about earlier, which seems to be a very small, but very loud minority. And, uh, I'm very happy to, um, to be to have been taught by by David and to be uh, part of of his community as well, and I look forward to you know if you guys are there you know drop by the the obsessed booth at at Week Fest. I would love to meet you guys in person. You know I I know uh, some of you. I these are definitely not your real names, right? So if you do see me there, make sure to let me know what your name is on here, and then I will remember you by that. So let's see here. Uh, Car Snob Soul Singer has got something here for you. Oh, about Subarus. Okay. Uh, Manny, I don't know if it's already been covered, but COVID brought out a lot of toxic personalities that aren't usually socially accepted. Just had two people banned from san clemente cars and coffees last week yeah unfortunately i know that uh david had to lay down the hammer on at least one person at his show uh i guess i could see that maybe after covid or maybe um maybe it wasn't as like literally it was after covid but it could have been that like covid because things were so quiet you could say because everyone was kind of you know kept in place when people came out it just drew a little bit more attention um, but yeah, uh, that could be it. Um, I don't know what is encouraging that other than it, it should have been like, I, I understand it to an extent, but, um, like for me personally, when COVID happened, um, I used to go to the gym five days a week. Uh, my whole cycle as far as working out in order to hit my entire body because I do it in segments, it takes me six workouts to hit my entire body twice. And, and to me, that's one cycle. After COVID came and went, I said, you know, that that was awful. Like, yes, I had a couple of dumbbells. I had some elastic bands. I had a, a, a bench to do some stuff. But if this ever happened again, I never want to take this for granted. So when the gyms opened back up, I went six days a week instead of five, right? I appreciated it more. And um, Manny, I, I completely understand what you're saying. I guess people like wanted to like have like that initial outburst, right? Um, but I think it's, I think you and I would both agree that it, it, it's in a negative mindset or people are being very selfish about it, right? So like, when I go to the gym, I'm not like, oh, 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 like yelling, screaming, dropping weights, like, oh, look at me, I'm, I'm doing my thing. It's like, no, like I appreciate being fit and I appreciate the gym being there. So after COVID happened, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna take advantage of it. Um, it would be hard for me to work out seven days a week uh, I definitely feel like I do need at least one rest day a week. I used to rest twice a week. Um, maybe when I get older, even older, I'll need the second day back. Uh, 
And so I don't understand why people would act like this, right? It's like, hey, you know, like we were kept inside for a long time, like let's appreciate it. And I feel like what my friend David is doing is 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 taking it to that level of like, hey, I'm going to honor the car community. We couldn't get together during this time. So the next time that we do, let's make it bigger, better, and beneficial to everybody, right? Not just the people at the event, not just the people that say, rev it, do a burnout, right? Even the people who aren't at the event, the most pleasurable thing for the people who aren't at the event is to know that there is that there was an even event right? Or they learn about the event because there's a big crowd of people, which is perfectly fine. And they say, Oh, what is that? And then they come and they say, Oh, this is a nice place. I could bring my kids here. I could, uh, I could spend an afternoon here. It puts the car community in a better light. Uh, so yeah, Manny, I'm sorry that you had to deal with that. Soul Slinger, I have a Mercedes I'm going to fix and sell soon. Okay, right on. Uh, share your insight on that. Um, I don't know if you like have all the receipts for everything, but how profitable is that? I wonder. Like if you picked up a car with the intention with the intent to like flip it right away, was it worth it not only monetarily but with your time? And how like kind of like what are the things to look for? So I'm actually very interested to hear that. And somebody with your experience, I know that you'd be able to give us a very detailed explanation on that. Your white bear detail. Okay, what's up, man? Soul Singer. COVID shut me down too. I haven't been to the gym since. Oh, no. Well, I hope that you go back. I hope. I don't. I don't think anybody's locked down. I hope not. Uh, yeah, I hope we get back to it soon. Um, there was a while in California where it was like, oh, we open it up, we close it back down, open it back up, close it down, open it back up. And I was like, you know what? If they're going to keep doing this, I'm just going to go six days a week and, and, and we'll figure it out. And I think on the day that they said like, oh, we're going to close the gym. I think I did a double day. Like, I don't understand too. Like during COVID, it's like. We don't want people to be close to each other, but then it's like, okay, like you want people to be, it's like you're making people be unhealthy. Like you're, you're going to close the gym it's where people are getting more fit and healthier. How does that make sense? Oh, you traded the 745i for the Mercedes. Hmm. I mean, you could lend an insight to that too. Like, like with the amount of work that you put into that car, do you feel that you would get back more than what you put in? Because in order for you to sell this, you have to get more than than your trouble. Otherwise, it's not worth it. You know, to do this and to break even, it's it's a waste, uh, especially with your talents. Right. So, yeah, I mean, all this stuff. I I hope. Uh, I hope to meet all of you guys at these type of events. Uh, I did. There's uh, F22 Nate, the guy who runs that account. He was at the last week fest. I think it's a good time. Um, you you would see cars that you would never really get to see, and enjoy people's company, right? Um, and not worry about getting a fine up to two thousand dollars for just being in the vicinity. So. Uh, if any of you guys are going to that event, uh, let me know, make sure when you introduce yourself, introduce yourself by this name. So I know who you are. If, uh, if you're here again, uh, I think David said that it's, uh, July 2nd. So right before all the fireworks and if there's nothing else, soul slinger, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to report. <clears throat> on the uh, transaction of the 740i to the Mercedes and then you eventually selling it once you do and kind of the whole process process with that. I will be checking out your pictures on Discord. Uh, I'm happy to hear that you're daily driving your car now. And uh, you said, we'll see how much I can make. I'm commuting with the 540i now. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking, I, I'm, I'm hoping nothing but the best for you. Let's see. White beard 
detail. I want to add something, but I got company. Okay, well, uh, uh, you could ask it next time, or you could send a DM here. I know I got to check my DMs. Uh, somebody else told me to check them. I'm I'm probably like the worst when it comes to checking them. Uh, sometimes like it goes into like the needs approval section, and I'm always bad at at checking that. So feel free to send it there, uh, Instagram or TikTok. I hope all of you enjoyed the rest of your night. I guess that'll bring us to a close. And uh, if you want me to cover a topic for next week, let me know what you'd like me to cover. And hope all of you have a good night, and I'll see you next week.